Hello, everyone, and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today, I have a vocabulary lesson for you. In today's lesson, we are going to discuss fifty. Yes, fifty. But don't worry, it won't be too much. Fifty advanced adjectives that you can use to describe personality. These words are more advanced, so you can give really accurate descriptions of people. In this video, we will also focus on pronunciation. I have included the phonetic transcription for each word, plus their meaning. And a little chat about where they can be used. I have also created a free PDF that goes along with this lesson. It contains all of the words that we discussed, along with their pronunciation and their meaning. And I have included a little quiz at the end so that you can test your understanding. If you'd like to download that PDF, just click on the link in the description box. You enter your name and your email address, and I send the PDF directly to your inbox. By doing this, you sign up to my mailing list, meaning that every week, as soon as the PDF is available, I'll send it straight to you. You don't need to sign up every time. I'll also keep you updated on all of my news. Offers and courses. Right, let's get started with the vocabulary lesson. So I have got twenty-five positive personality adjectives and twenty-five negative personality adjectives. Which ones do you think we should start with? I think I'm going to start with positive, so we can raise everyone's mood and then bring you back down again. Just how I like it. Number one is adaptable. Adaptable. If somebody is an adaptable person, it means they are someone who is able to change to successfully deal with new situations, especially difficult ones. You could say she's a great social worker because she's so adaptable. She's such an adaptable person. We also have number two, which is affable. Affable. This can be used to describe somebody who is pleasant, polite, and easy to talk to. It's a very positive word. He was incredibly affable with me when I forgot my ticket. Number three, ambitious. Ambitious. This is usually positive, but sometimes, depending on tone, it can be slightly negative as well. It describes somebody who is determined to be rich, powerful, and successful. He's very ambitious, and I think he'll do very well in life. Number four. This is a lovely one. Amicable. Amicable. This is a way of saying that somebody is polite and friendly, and can manage situations without arguments. He seemed very amicable on the telephone, so I was shocked at his rude email. Number five is bright, bright, and a lot of learners of English misunderstand this word because it also means shining. You know, a source of light. When we're using it to describe people, it usually means intelligent or clever. You're a bright girl. I know you'll pass the exam. You're an intelligent or clever girl. Number six is broad-minded. Broad-minded. I mentioned a couple of videos back. Narrow-minded. This is the opposite. Narrow-minded. Broad-minded. It means that you are willing to understand and listen to other people's opinions, even if they're different from your own. Luckily, our boss is quite broad-minded, so I'm sure he won't mind you wearing that today. <laughs> I wonder what that person was wearing for a boss to have to be broad-minded. <laughs> We also have number seven: conscientious. Conscientious. This can be used to describe people who take care to do things carefully and correctly. His conscientious manner makes him a fantastic engineer. Number eight: convivial. Convivial. This simply means cheerful and friendly. She was a convivial party host who made everyone feel welcomed. We also have number nine, courteous. Courteous. I really like that word. Courteous. This means polite and respectful. If somebody is courteous, they are a respectful and polite person. I can't believe how courteous the school children were today. I remember it was such an honour to be called courteous at school. Number ten is decisive. Decisive, and like many of these, it does depend on context and tone of voice. This is used to describe somebody who is able to decide quickly and with confidence. She's quite decisive, so I don't think she'll change her mind. Number eleven is determined. Determined, very similar to ambitious in a way, but in particular, this is used to describe people who are able to continue trying to do something 
even if it's difficult. Her determined nature made her the perfect Olympian. Number 12, diplomatic. Diplomatic. If I can think of anyone who's diplomatic, it is my father, the most diplomatic man on earth, I think. It means that he's able to deal with people in difficult situations. If some people are having an argument in front of him, he can say, now, now, everyone, let's sit down, talk it out. Let's find an arrangement that's mutually beneficial. <laughs> with my dad, it's all about compromise. My dad's diplomatic nature made him a great boss. Number 13, this one is used to describe my husband to be. Easy going, <laughs> easy going. Also laid back might be another alternative. This is used to describe people who are relaxed and happy to accept things without worrying or stressing or getting angry. That's my fiance in a nutshell. We often say he's so laid back, that he's actually horizontal. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him get really stressed. An example, he's an easygoing guy with a carefree attitude. <laughs> Number 14 is exuberant, exuberant. This means full of energy, happiness and excitement. And do you know what today I think that describes me? I do feel particularly full of energy, happiness and excitement. <laughs> An example, her exuberant nature exhausted me. <laughs> Number 15, this is my mum's favourite word, not favourite, but she uses it a lot, frank, frank. <laughs> it's sometimes positive and sometimes negative, it's actually quite neutral. If somebody is frank, it means they are honest and direct, especially in what they say. So they say things without worrying too much about if it will offend people. If anyone is ever rude to my mum, she will then describe them to me as frank. She's quite frank. <laughs> He was very frank with me, which means he was bloody rude to me. <laughs> She's very frank, but she gets results. That's a good sentence. Number 16 is gregarious. Gregarious. This simply means sociable. I think you'll get on well as you're both so gregarious. Number 17, intuitive. Intuitive. This means you're able to understand something or someone by using feelings rather than using facts or understanding the facts. She's a great teacher because she's so intuitive. She understands what her students need without having to ask them. Number 18 is inventive. Inventive. This means imaginative or creative, able to think of new ideas, new ways of doing things. I'm sure he'll find a use for your broken television. He's incredibly inventive. <laughs> Number 19 is modest. Modest. This is used to describe somebody who doesn't talk about how great they are. They don't boast or talk about their abilities or their possessions. If somebody understates something, if somebody says, oh, my English isn't that good, but their English is very good, you can say, I think you're being a bit modest there. We also use it sarcastically. If somebody does show off, we go, oh, modest. You're very modest. <laughs> Number 20 is pioneering, pioneering. This is used to describe early adopters, people who start to do something first and then others follow. An example, she had an affair with a pioneering cryptocurrency investor. <laughs> Number 21 is placid, placid. And this is positive leaning towards neutral. It could also be used to describe somebody a bit boring, but it means not easily excited, very calm. Don't worry about our dog, he's very placid, he won't jump up. Number 22 is proactive, proactive. This is used to describe somebody who makes things happen. They don't wait for things to happen, they make things happen. She's very proactive when it comes to her work life, but her personal life is very different, me. <laughs> 23 is quick-witted, quick-witted. And this means very intelligent, very able to think quickly, or very quick to respond with funny or witty comments. I wouldn't heckle the comedian, he is very quick-witted. To heckle is to shout something at a comedian or a performer from the audience, usually in order to get a reaction. Number 24 is resourceful, resourceful. If somebody is resourceful, they are good at finding ways of doing things or solving problems. We didn't have much money growing up, but our mother was very resourceful. And number 25, 
The last positive adjective is versatile. Versatile. This means able to do many things. My personal assistant is incredibly versatile. She's able to do all sorts of things. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end. And now we've got to talk about the negative adjectives, but they are quite fun. They're good for talking about people. <laughs> Number one is aloof. Aloof. I could have described my old dog as aloof. It means not friendly and not interested in other people. We had a sausage dog, a dachshund, and she came to you on her own terms. She was not friendly, she was aloof. Number two is belligerent. Belligerent, what a wonderful word to say. This means unfriendly and aggressive. His belligerent attitude drove me up the wall. Number three is big-headed. Big-headed, this means arrogant, overconfident. You think a lot of yourself. He's very handsome, but he's also very big-headed and that puts me off. Number four is callous. Callous. If you're callous, it means you don't care about other people's feelings, pain or problems. The headmaster was incredibly callous and disregarded the feelings of the students. Number five, prepare yourself. This is such a fun word. Cantankerous. Cantankerous. Cantankerous, what a great word. It means often angry or often complaining. I'm so sick of her. She is so cantankerous. She's never pleased. Number six, this is a really useful one. Clingy, clingy. This is used to describe somebody who is needing someone else too much. It could be used to describe a partner, a romantic partner, or a child to their parent. Stop being so clingy, I need some time alone. They don't want to let you go. They're clinging on like a baby monkey. Number seven is cynical, cynical. This can be used to describe people who are very negative. They don't believe that the good will happen. Why do you always have to be so cynical? Lighten up a bit. Number eight is detached, detached. And this describes people who show a lack of feeling. If somebody says detached from reality, it can mean that they're very privileged and they don't understand reality. They don't understand how the majority of people live. He's very detached. I wonder if something's on his mind. Number nine is dogmatic. Dogmatic. This is used to describe people who believe that their opinions and their beliefs are the only correct way of thinking. They think that everyone else should accept what they think and what they see to be right, and they won't accept the opinions and thoughts of others. The politician was the most dogmatic person I've ever met. Number 10, fussy, fussy. This means hard to please or too concerned about having things exactly as you want them. It's often used to describe people who are picky about food. If somebody is a fussy eater, they're a picky eater. They don't like lots of different types of foods. My new client is so fussy, I just can't seem to please him. Number 11, I love this one, gullible, gullible. This describes people who are too willing to believe what people tell them, so they're easily tricked. In my old flat, I had the word gullible written on the ceiling, and I'd always tell people there's gullible written on the ceiling, and they would think I was trying to trick them, and they would never look. But there was actually gullible written on the ceiling. I didn't actually have that many opportunities to try that out on people. No one ever came to my house. Number 12 is impulsive impulsive. You can use this to describe people who act quickly without thinking things through. They act on impulse. He's too impulsive. He just bought a Lamborghini on finance. Number 13 is, is it? I don't know if it is. It might be. It's indecisive. <laughs> okay, if you are indecisive then it means you are not able to make decisions quickly and effectively as I just demonstrated. I'm very indecisive when it comes to picking outfits. I can never decide what I want to wear. Number 14 is materialistic. Materialistic. This describes people who have possessions and money as their top priority. They care about possessions and material things more than anything else. An example, 
Barbie is incredibly materialistic. All she cares about is fashion. Poor Barbie, there's a lot more to Barbie than that. Number 15 is narrow-minded, narrow-minded. I know I mentioned broad-minded before, this is the opposite. It means you're not willing to listen to the opinions of others or the ideas or beliefs of others. The misogynist was incredibly narrow-minded. Number 16, fun word alert, obnoxious, obnoxious, oh, obnoxious. This means extremely unpleasant in a way that offends people. He is the most obnoxious person I have ever met in my life. Number 17 is obstinate. Obstinate. This is often used to describe children. It means very stubborn. It means that you refuse to change your behaviour or your opinions. She's very cute, but she's also very obstinate. 18. Shall I tell you what 18 is? Do you need to know? It's patronising. Mm, patronising. If you're patronising, it means you think you're more intelligent than people and you make them feel that way too. You talk to them as if they're less than you. If somebody treats you as if you're stupid, you can say, stop being so patronising. I'm not a child. I'm not stupid. Number 19 is possessive possessive and this actually has two meanings that I'd like to discuss with you. If somebody is possessive about someone it means they demand all of their attention and love, they don't want to share them with anyone. It's very negative if somebody has a possessive partner. People can also be possessive about things. It can mean that they don't like to lend things or share things. So we could have she had a hard time breaking up with her possessive boyfriend or don't expect to be allowed to drive his car, he's incredibly possessive. Number 20 is resentful. Resentful. This means that you hold grudges. If somebody has treated you badly in the past, you feel bitter about it forever. Her difficult past has made her very resentful. Number 21 is self-centred. Self-centred. This means you put yourself first. You don't think about the needs of others. Stop being so self-centred and think about what's right for the children. Number 22 is stingy. Stingy. Okay, focus on that pronunciation. It's got that j. It's not stingy. Something could be stingy if it stings you a lot. Stingy means you are tight with money. You're not generous at all when it comes to money. I hate going out for drinks with her because she's so stingy, I always end up paying. 23 is tactless. Tactless. This is a hard one to pronounce because it's ta k t l e s <laughs> So we've got k t l all together. Tactless. If you don't have much tact, then you are tactless. This means that you're likely to say or do things that will probably annoy or upset other people. You were so tactless when you commented on her weight. 24 is a great one. It's quite casual. It's touchy, touchy. If somebody is touchy, they are easily upset or offended. We often say, oh, he's a bit touchy. Oh, touchy. Don't upset her. She's very touchy. And the last one, number 25, it's vain. <laughs> this means conceited. It means you're obsessed with your appearance or your own achievements or just yourself in general. You're so vain. You probably think this class is about you because you're so vain. <laughs> yeah, that can be the example. You're so vain, you probably think this class is about you. <laughs> right, that is it for today's lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I have pushed lots of vocabulary words your way. Don't forget to download the PDF. You can complete the quiz and test your understanding. Just click on the link in the description box, enter your name and your email address, and I will send it directly to your inbox. If you want to practice your listening and vocabulary skills even further, then I have my vlogging channel with loads of fully subtitled vlogs of my life here in the English countryside. And you can connect with me on my social media. I have my Instagram at Lucy and my website, englishwithlucy.co.uk, where I have a fantastic pronunciation tool. You can click on the phonemes and hear me pronounce them. E, no, air. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah. I'm sure he'll find a use for your broken sofa. He's very inventive. <laughs> uh.
Uh, that's not actually as funny as I thought it would be. I'm sure he'll find a use for your broken television antenna. No, <laughs> why that? So specific. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else new. To the negative adjectives used to describe personality. Oh, it's gonna be so depressing. No, sorry, I'm too excited today. Too excited, trying to reel myself in. Why am I doing that? <laughs> number six. No, it's not number six, sorry. Number 14. Oh, f I've just replaced full batteries and they, they've gone. I can't believe it. Number 14 is <laughs> about to choke me. Number 29. This is a hard one to pronounce because we've got 